possible at this stage as he's coming back earlier and they are you know holding it down as it would seem right now uh, only two points uh, outside of fourth and fifth but I mean still eight points out of a playoff of being outside of the playoffs so so doing very well yeah, that's that's crazy for Tampa. And also, we should mention that Martin St. Louis, 1,000th 1, 1, game he played in his 1,000th 1, game. It's hard to say. Uh, and yeah, he was... Uh that was a great night for him. He scored on a breakaway. Uh, really exciting night for uh, St. Louis. Um, there was a great quote uh, out, of Tam- out of Tampa's newspaper uh, saying... Some- I'm paraphrasing, but it was like... Uh, it was always... Tampa Bay, the Lightning was always considered to be Vinny LeCavalier's team. Then he left, and it was always considered to be Steven Stamkos' team. But really, when you look back at it all along, it's been Martin St. Louis' team. He has, yeah. he has been the Tampa Bay Lightning. He embodies everything that that organization strives to be and has an, had an amazing career thus far. And uh, hopefully he's got you know four or five more years left. And, I mean, it, it, look at him now. I mean, he might make Team Canada at his age. Uh, he's playing great hockey. He's been their best player. He's really carried the team, carried the load of the team, I should say, while Stamkos has been out and hasn't missed a beat. Classy guy. Really awesome to see him play in his thousandth game. That's, that's really cool. Spectacular too for, I mean, all the small players out there. Um, there's not a lot of these guys in the NHL and Martin St. Louis, uh, makes it look easy to be a small guy, which is not an easy task. And on top of that, um, he's, he's in with the, uh, you know, the regular size and above guys who, uh, every, obviously every player works their butt off, but when you have a size disadvantage in the NHL, it is a big deal. And, uh, St. Louis is one of the smallest and he's one of the best. So it's, it's pretty incredible and very inspiring to a lot of younger players who can get easily defeated just by, because of their size. So, this this generation's Theo Fleury, maybe uh, minus the uh, binge drinking. Yeah, minus the and the drama. Yeah, a little bit of that um, taken away from from it. Uh, as we said, pretty classy guy too. So yeah, <laughs> um, a couple more teams. Uh, some more teams to talk about here. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, eh, kind of underperforming. I mean, they're still third. But then again, this is the Eastern Conference, and well, it kind of sucks out East right now. The yeah, team, four or know. five and one in their last ten, not uh, not great, as, especially as far as uh, Sidney Crosby and Pittsburgh Penguins standards go. Um, excellent for me, Montreal. Montreal just beat Pittsburgh the other night. We were up three nothing and, and uh, held them off three to two in the end. So yeah. that was a nice feeling. Um, Crosby's obviously. still tearing it though. I mean, he's still racking in the points. Yeah. Tied that yeah. tied that game up with like point three seconds to go the other night. So I mean, Crosby's still tearing it. Uh, but yeah, they're it's not. It's crazy that he can put that kind of weight on his shoulders, and they are still behind the Tampa Bay Lightning without Steven Stamkos. And that's the best part is like st- Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh being side by side right now. Uh, hello, yeah. you have your fifty goal scorer. We don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you have two. Malkin's still playing. Pittsburgh can be doing way better than they are right now, and I really oh, yeah, would... should be crushing it. There's no excuses. Meanwhile, in the West, Chicago um, probably listening to our show and going, "Yeah, you're, they're right. We should probably start trying, so we don't look so bad." And thus, they're at the first of the West. Yeah, they are absolutely. Yeah, they've turned it on. They're at 100 percent capacity now, and they look Which absolutely. Oh, and it just it turns the whole ship around. It's absolutely crazy. Oh, it's terrifying. I mean, they're. In my eyes, they could repeat for the cup this year, no problem. Like they, the West just... looks so stupid. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but I'm just like reading down this list, and I'm like, Chicago, seventeen and four. Oh, they're in first. That makes sense. St. Louis, seventeen and three. Well, how come they're not in first? Anaheim, seventeen and six. San Jose, fifteen and three. Los Angeles, sixteen and six. Colorado, they were in first, seventeen and five, and they're in sixth place. Yeah, falling down the <laughs> wrong. No, not not falling down. Well, they're I mean, like, statistically, they aren't, but. I- 17 and 5 is incredible and they're in 6th place. Well, that's how good the West is. We talked about this last show, that parody right now like I need to do some points analysis though cuz it's more or or find someone who has done it because there's it's more than that. It's more than they're just good. Yeah. Because it like it there it's got to have something to do with less teams. I've never ever seen this. Maybe the travel? I don't know. Well, like look at the Canucks. They're ninth place ninth place right now with 29 points. They'd be tied for 4th in the East. I'm just going to blame it on Alberta. I'm just going to blame it on Alberta and say you can't let your whole conference beat up on you because that's <laughs> what's happening. Because, I mean, Dallas is 11-9. and nine. They're two games above 500, and they're four spot, five spots out of a playoff spot. Calgary is 8-11, and 11, and Edmonton is 7-16. and 16. That's what's happening. I mean, we're beating up on Buffalo, uh, but they're and just Florida. Really bad. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't have an explanation for this, but there's got to be one because it's too it's too out of proportion. I don't understand how Vancouver could miss the playoffs at 12 and 9. I just I don't. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the West has been stronger than the East for a while now. I mean, we missed the playoffs back in, uh, I want to say, 2007, 2008, I think it was, or maybe it was the year after. No, I think it was 2007, 2008, or maybe it was 2006 or 7. I can't totally remember. It was like the second year Vigneault was our coach, whatever year that was. I think I want to say 2007, 2008. And uh, we had, uh, I think we were like five games above 500. Like, we had a good record, or maybe six games above 500, and we missed the playoffs by like one point. And, I mean, so that's been traditional. That's been really common for the West over the last, well, for a very long time. The West Coast has just had the better teams or the more, it seems, that the teams that just get more points. And even, like, ninth, 10th place teams, they'll finish with really good records on paper. And if they're out East, they'd be somewhere in the middle of the pack. But because they're out West, they're 8th or ninth or ninth or 10th, I should say. What's surprising this year, though, is how big of a difference in points that there are between the two conferences. We've never seen anything like that before. And you're correct. I don't know what the reason is. I mean, is it because there are more teams out east? Or is it because Calgary and Edmonton just suck? But then you look out east, Buffalo and Florida have worse records than Calgary and Edmonton. And the Islanders and Columbus and Ottawa, they all have pretty bad records. So, I mean, the east has a lot of bad teams as well that are getting beaten up. So... I don't know if there is an explanation. It could just be a fluke thing. But So, Andy, at this pace, it will take 85 to 90 points to make the playoffs in the East. And it would take 95 to 110 points to make the playoffs in the West. Sigh. At this pace. <laughs> that's oh, ridiculous. Man, that's you have to get 95 points to make the playoffs. Or if you're lucky and you're in the East, you only need 80. Like, <laughs> I can't remember the last time any team made the playoffs with 80 points. You could have a team that's that, – look, the Rangers are 500 and they're in the playoffs. Yeah. If a 500 team makes the playoffs, then as much as I love realignment, something is messed up. Cal- <laughs> Calgary is going to be like petitioning to be in the Eastern yeah. Conference next year. They're yeah. Like, hey, can we move? That'd be great. Yeah, Thanks. we'll we will trade you Detroit, and you can take us, so we can get in the playoffs. And I'm happy with that as a Montreal fan. We'll give you Pittsburgh, and you can have Detroit back, and we'll take and Calgary and Edmonton. We'll give you the Bruins too. And then Montreal. <laughs> Screw can that! Play. I don't want to see those guys more than once a year. No way, no way, no how. Actually, no. That that's great hockey. Anytime we play them. On the them, note so. for the Edmonton Oilers, it looks like um, they're going to try to get out of their seven and sixteen hole by starting a Mister Ilya Brzezgalov on Thursday. It'll be oh. the first start against the Nashville Predators. Um, so uh, way to go, Ilya! It's nice to see that you still have a job. Hopefully, you can um, give Edmonton a hand in turning their season around. <laughs> Yeah, he's. Uh, I predict it right now. He's going to be their savior. He's going to win 20 games in a row, uh, get 10 shutouts in a row, and they're going to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, they're going to win every single game in the playoffs. As much as a joke of it is, it would be <laughs> nice to see because I love those young Canadian guys. Briz Galoff would be the best soundbite ever again because right now, obviously, we haven't heard much from him. Um, but to be in a Canadian city and the winning Canadian city and be the reason he turned it around, oh, you'd have a quote every night. You'd have a quote after every game. Yeah. It'd be fantastic. I just want to follow Why are you Ilya. So mad? It's just game. Why well, you have to be mad? It's just game. I just want I want to follow him around with a mic for just a day. Oh, and fantastic. Just, yeah, it would be amazing. Um, okay, well let's. Oh, uh, you know what? Um, you might get your wish because I believe the Edmonton Oilers have a television series called Oil Change. Oh, they do. That's right. There you go. So he will actually uh, be on weekly television. I bet you there will be many, many YouTube clips. Um, that'll be awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Speaking of uh, funny clips, did you see that gif of uh, Dustin Brown completely missing that body check and going face first into the boards? No. You should watch it. It's very funny. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, briefly the Philadelphia... <laughs> Dustin Brown gif. Look it up. Yeah, yeah, look it up. It, it's it's funny. He just it completely misses his check. Like, not even close. I don't even know what he was looking at and just slams his face into the boards. It's And sort of has this look after, like... Oh my God. Uh, I just- is that um, you know that there a while like two or three seasons ago there was the the gif of the player on the bench drinking uh, or trying to drink water out of the water bottle and he has it upside down. So yeah, that, that's brown. Because that was brown. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he that's with awesome. with, the, with, so with the, he's the, got two now. Yeah, with the line underneath like I can count to potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk uh, briefly. Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, oh no, a picture I just saw it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia Flyers, uh, they're still 10-11, and 11, uh, so the record isn't great, but uh, they are playing better hockey. They're kind of turning things around a little bit over there. Philadelphia seems to be uh, playing much better, well, much better than they were. They're not a bottom. I, really, I mean, I'm, I'm going to wait before I even give a crap because, I mean, with Claude Giroux and, and um, Vincent LeCavalier on your lineup, like, hello, show up, score goals, what's happening? 
But like, you know, maybe they've maybe they they finally sort of found their game, and uh, I mean, they definitely have the talent. It's not too late; they can still get into a playoff spot. They, they it's only November. Well, almost. Clutch Rude is the December. points leader on the team, and he only scored his first goal like a week ago. Yeah, I think he finally scored his second the other night, so he's no longer. He's got three. He's oh, got there you go. Now, yeah. So, so, so Mike Smith Kanye even has eight. So I mean, this, this is just a sad. So what you're sad. saying is Mike Smith has to step up his game big time to to get yeah. back up there with Giroux. Yeah, I know. Uh, Philadelphia, yeah, it's it's sad over there, but they're playing better. So, I mean, you know, glass half full. Hopefully they found their game and they can regain their form a little bit and squeak into a playoff spot. It's not too late. Just wanted to bring that up quickly. And likewise, the New York Islanders, they're 8-13. Uh, they're not playing good hockey at all right now. I was, you know, I thought they'd be a bubble team this year. I thought with Tavares leading the way that they would be able to squeak in again, but uh, they don't look very good right now. Uh the Islanders don't look good at all. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there, but maybe last year was a bit of an aberration and they still have some growing to do. I don't know, but uh, they definitely look like a young team right now. Uh, we also got, oh, you want to talk about Montreal trade rumors? Yeah, there was a small one, I mean, because uh, we were trying to dig up some news today, but essentially, um, apparently, Evander Kane has always been under the eye of Mark Bergevin and uh, the Montreal Canadiens. Well, so- he doesn't appear to like it in Winnipeg, that's the rumor. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know because I'm I'm a big believer in team morale. I think that's the most important thing that you can have as a happy dressing room over and above anything else. So that kind of makes me nervous. But at the same oh, time, don't tell me you wouldn't looking, love him though. Yeah, yeah, and we're he's incredible. Both, yeah, he's an amazing player. We're looking for a forty goal, a forty goal scorer, top line forward. Um, we have a little bit of cap space, and given one or two trades, we could we could make that work. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was hearing out of Montreal, but uh, obviously still some waiting to be done. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, any team that could get Evander Kane, I still don't believe that Winnipeg is going to get rid of him personally. I think that's a, lo- a long shot. But uh, if Winnipeg was to get rid of him uh, and Montreal was to get him, then yeah, that would be huge for them, absolutely huge for them because uh, Evander Kane is one of the, the best players in the world. So, I mean, any time you have a chance to get Evander Kane, you just jump at the opportunity. But who would Montreal give up in return? Like, I would imagine that Winnipeg would want probably someone like a Galchenyuk or a, or a Gallagher in, in his place. Um, the rumor right now is actually Pacioretty, uh, just because they're trying to build his uh, his trade uh, stock value. That or PK Subban, because they're having difficulty negotiating um, a contract, wow. which would make me very very sad. Um, but, oh, brutal! Uh, I don't man. know. Wait, oh, I, I, if I was you, I would not want to trade Subban for. I mean, as good as Kane is. Oh, w- Subban's number one defenseman in the NHL. That would be awful. But yeah. when a player wants to go, there's not a lot you can do about it. This is true. This is true. And, I mean, if they can't give Subban the money he wants, then, um, yeah. that I mean, that would be the kind of player you would have to ask for to get a guy like Kane. They're both superstars, so it would have to be a player of Subban's caliber. And it's not to say that it wouldn't work out well for Montreal if that was to happen, because, I mean, Kane has just as high a probability of becoming a dominating player that Subban has. So, I mean, they both have the potential to be, uh, you know, top five in the league. Um, well, you could argue that Subban already is defensively, but uh, they both have that potential to stay in that category. So I don't think it would be a terrible trade for Montreal. Like, I wouldn't be absolutely devastated if I was you if you were to get a Vander Kane for Subban. But initially, my initial reaction would be, oh, it's brutal, just because Kane hasn't totally established himself yet. I mean, he's getting there, but he hasn't totally established himself as a p- consistent performer. And Subban just won a Norris trophy. So the initial loss would be pretty bad. But at the same time, if you look at it five years down the road, that trade might not be so bad for the, the, the Montreal Canadiens ultimately. You never, you never know. You never know. But I think you guys are stronger on offense than you are on defense. So for me, that trade doesn't make sense for, sense for you. Really, that's a funny, that's a funny point because I, I actually quite like our defense. I think it's incredible. I think the one thing Montreal does need um, and always has needed is a full-fledged superstar um, or at least you know an all-star who can score 40 goals. Yeah, but who else besides Subban do you have that's of that caliber? Well, no one of that caliber, but do you need more than one Norris Trophy, tro- trophy winner on your mm-hmm. roster? I think, like, Subban's incredible. Markov's got a couple good years left, and his injuries haven't kicked up since Yeah, but if you, but so if you trade like, Subban, then what, 
your I mean, if you trade Subban, oh, you're de- yeah. If we trade Subban, that's what I'm saying. Then, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Your your defensive core is a lot weaker. In big trouble, but I I think we have a strong defense. I think we we're we're lacking on forward right now. I'm um, sorry. So I guess I misunderstood what you were saying. But yeah, without Subban, we would have to go looking again. Um, obviously not for a Norris winner, but for somebody who could fill a second pair because we'd have to be moving people up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you're right. I wouldn't I wouldn't want um, to lose Subban at the cost of a of a decent forward unless that forward was um was a uh, bona fide superstar yeah no I-